In this session, we are going to talk about correlation analysis, the concept of correlation, its interpretation, and how do we report correlation analysis in SPSS. Now, what is correlation analysis? Correlation is actually a measure of relationship between two variables or two variables. It has wide application in business and its statistics. Now, what do you do when you have two variables that are needed to be studied together? How would you use SPSS to identify the relationship, association, link or bonding between those two variables at one time? The analysis of relationship between the two variables is termed as correlation analysis. Now, when you are looking into identification or assessment of relationship between two variables. Now, whether or not the relationship is significant and what is the strength of relationship or what is the direction of relationship between those two variables? You use correlation analysis. Now, here are a few scenarios in which you can use correlation analysis. So, a few situations that require the use of correlation analysis. The first for example, a university professor would like to know if social responsibility is associated with university reputation. Is there a link of social responsibility and university reputation? Does social responsibility or increase in social responsibility initiatives lead to an increase in the university reputation in the community? Another example could be a marketing manager would like to know if a hike in prices or increase in prices, does it lead to a decrease in sales? So is there a relationship between increase in prices and decrease in sales? A HR manager would like to know if an increase in employee pay would result in low absenteeism. So is there a relationship between pay and absenteeism? A social science researcher would like to know if increase in age results in decrease of conflicts at work or home. So with an increase of age at work or at home, is there a decrease in conflicts? There are a number of different statistics available from SPSS depending on the level of measurement and the nature of your data. Now you can, there are two types of correlations that you can use. One is Pearson product moment correlation shown by R and the other one is Spearman correlation rho. So if your data is on interval scale and it's normally distributed, you go for Pearson product moment correlation. But what if your data is not on interval or ratio scale? What if it's on ordinal scale? Then you use Spearman rho procedure. So you use correlation analysis when you want to assess the significance and strength of relationship between two variables. And if your data is on interval or ratio scale, you use Pearson correlation. Otherwise, if it's on ordinal scale, you use Spearman correlation procedure. Now, Pearson correlation, this is the focus of this study today. Pearson R, depicted by R, is designed for interval or ratio or continuous variables. It can also be used if you have one continuous variable and one dichotomous variable. So if one variable is continuous and the other is dichotomous having two values, for example, gender or type of organization. Now how is correlation expressed? It's, it is expressed in the form of a coefficient which is symbolized as R. So R is the symbol for correlation coefficient. And the value of correlation coefficient ranges between plus one to minus one. Where plus 1 or a positive sign would mean that the relationship between these two variables is positive. But what if there is a negative sign with uh, the correlation coefficient? This negative sign would mean that there is a negative relationship. An increase in one variable or increase in the value of one variable, there would be a decrease in the other variable. So positive, negative or zero correlation. There could be positive correlation shown by plus sign, negative correlation shown by a negative sign and when there is no correlation, it's referred to as zero correlation. The positive and negative sign indicate positive and negative correlation respectively. Positive sign shows that an increase in one variable 
the other increases as well. While negative sign shows that with an increase in one variable, the other decreases. For example, with let's say, let's assume with servant leadership, the conflict within the organization may decrease. So this is negative correlation. Positive correlation would mean that an organization that is socially responsible, its performance would increase or would be heightened. However, the value itself provides an indication of strength of relationship. The value of this R, the correlation coefficient, it shows the strength of relationship. The value, the closer the value is to 1, the higher the strength is. A perfect correlation 1 or minus 1 indicates the value of one variable can be determined exactly by knowing the value of another variable or the other variable in the analysis. On the other hand, a correlation of 0 indicates no relationship between the two variables, which means that if you know one of the value or one uh, know the value of one of the variables, it provides no assistance whatsoever in predicting the value of second variable. Whereas if it's absolute correlation, it means that both variables are actually measuring the same thing and there is multicollinearity. So you might need to delete one of the variables from your study. Now, how do you interpret the correlation coefficient, which actually shows the strength of relationship, how strong the variables are related with each other? Merely computation of correlation does not have any significance. It is important that we know what is meant by the coefficient, which is shown by R. What it tells about the data? To have an answer, generally the coefficient of correlation is interpreted in verbal description. So you interpret R in a verbal description. So correlation coefficient can be easily interpreted using the following table. So here is a table that can help you interpret correlation coefficient R. If it's 1, it's a perfect correlation, perfect positive or negative. If it's between 0.90 to 0.99, it's very high positive or negative correlation depending on the sign. Same is the case with high positive or negative correlation. But what if it's between 0 0.0 or 0 0.10? It's very low, negligible correlation. And you can obviously interpret the rest like this. It is important to note that correlation does not provide any information about cause and effect. There is no clear demarcation as X is causing Y. It's just the analysis of relationship. You cannot establish causation based on correlation. So correlation is not equal to causation. You cannot say X causes Y or Y causes Z. It's just the interpretation of how the two variables are related with each other. Let's have a sample hypothesis that we can use uh, to test uh, sorry, correlation. A sample hypothesis when testing correlation could be, there is a significant relationship between servant leadership and self-efficacy. So we are testing the relationship between the two variables. We are not establishing that there is a significant impact of servant leadership on self-efficacy because correlation analysis does not do that for you. Correlation is just the analysis or assessment of relationship between two variables. Now what if you are interested in testing relationship between more than two variables at a time? So in that case, we go for correlation metrics. Correlation is often used to explore the relationship among group of variables, more than two variables. In this case, it would be awkward to report all individual correlation. Now, you cannot run multiple correlation just checking two variables at a time. So, SPSS allows you correlation metrics, wherein you put in multiple variables and test their relationship. And this is, and the table that you get is referred to as correlation metrics. SPSS results provide the table that can be part of your thesis. Obviously, you need to format this. I strongly recommend never put directly like the tables from your SPSS results into your document. Format them. Now, in order to produce a correlation matrix showing relationship between more than two variables, you need to add more than two variables on which the relationship is intended to be studied. And we'll be discussing this and showing this to you in a minute. Now, let's do our example. Here is our data. 
and I've already transformed the variables servant leadership, self-efficacy, job satisfaction and life satisfaction. Here are a few two variables and the hypothesis that we need we are testing is servant leadership and self-efficacy. Now this is the problem that we need to investigate. We are investigating the relationship between servant leadership and self-efficacy. And based on this problem, what we have done is we have proposed this hypothesis. There is a significant relationship between servant leadership and self-efficacy. Here is a sample on how to report correlation analysis. But before reporting correlation analysis, let's do our correlation analysis. In order to do correlation analysis, what we will do is we will go to analyze, correlate, bivariate. Analyze, correlate, bivariate. And what you will get is you will get this dialog box here. And we are for now, let us say we are interested in two variables, servant leadership, we select it and put it in here. Self-efficacy, select and put it in here and we are interested in Pearson correlation because this is a continuous variable on interval scale. Test of significance, two-tailed or one-tailed? We will use one-tailed if we know the direction of relationship, if we know that there is a positive or negative relationship between these variables. But two-tailed if you are not sure about the direction of relationship. In this case, Let's say we, we are not sure whether it will be positive or negative. So let's say we use two-tailed. Flag significant correlation. Now where correlation coefficient tells you about the strength of relationship. What you are actually interested in is whether the relationship is significant or not. So SPSS will flag significant correlation, highlight the significant correlation with asterisks. So you obviously check this checkbox. Just you do not need to do anything, just press OK. And here are your results. Now the correlation between servant leadership and servant leadership will obviously be absolute because the values are same. Now what is the relationship between servant leadership and self-efficacy? It is 0.534. Now how do you interpret this 5.534? It is your R. This shows the strength of relationship. How strong is the relationship between servant leadership and self-efficacy? So if we go back to our table here, it's moderately positive correlation. Why positive? Because there is no negative sign with it. So if there is no negative sign, we say that it is positive relationship. So an increase in servant leadership would, would lead to an increase in self-efficacy of the employees. But this is moderately strong correlation. Is it significant as well? Because this is what we are interested in. We are interested in judging the significance of relationship. Yes, it is significant because it is less than 0 0.05. It is even significant at the level 0 0.01. So even if we change the level of significance to 0 0.01, it would still remain significant. Now you see this here, it is the same value. This is your correlation matrix. Let us say, how do we report this results? Let us say we copy this and we put it here. Now I have already put the table and uh, slightly formatted it. So let's say how do we report these results. Pearson product correlation of servant leadership and self-efficacy was found to be moderately positive and statistically significant. Now this is showing the strength of relationship and this is showing the significance of relationship. Here you write your R value correlation coefficient and here you write your P value which is less than 0 0.001. Hence your H1 was supported. This shows that an increase in servant leadership behavior would lead to higher self-efficacy in the followers. Now let's say we are interested in multiple variables and their relationship. So how do we do this? How do we run or get a correlation matrix with multiple variables? Analyze, correlate, bivariate and let's put in the other two as well. Do not do anything else, just press OK and here is your correlation matrix showing the relationship of each variable with the other variables in this study. You can copy this 
and put it in here. Now the values below and above the diagonal are same. So servant leadership and its relationship with self-efficacy, this is the correlation coefficient. Servant leadership and its relationship with job satisfaction, servant leadership and its relationship with life satisfaction. What we normally do is we do not need or actually we, we remove values above the diagonal. This is normally how correlation is reported. Okay, we do not need this at the top. Let's select this and let's say all borders. Let's change its layout, rather design. Okay, let's put this in the end here. We do not need this cell. So select and delete. And we, are, we normally do not report the significance and n value with this correlation table. So what we do is we need to change it slightly, the select it and put like create a cell for your variables. Now let's arrange it a bit and we do not need this whole column. So we will remove it and we do not need this as well, these cells. So once you remove these cells and you would have seen this like a table like this in some thesis or paper. Let's format it a bit, remove the borders because we normally do not show the borders except for the bottom borders, top border and the bottom border and the top row. So this is how you report your correlation matrix. I hope and uh, now you understand what correlation is, how it is reported, how it is used and the correlation matrix as well. Thank you very much.